Atlantis Alive, focusing on matters of faith. In the precious name of Jesus, my name is William Julius. I'm staying in Atlantis now for 45 years. Um, I'm going to speak to you about family. Not the expert. I won't say that I'm an expert in that. But I've learned over the years quite a few things that I feel can be of benefit to you uh, if you listen to what I'm saying and if you maybe even apply that uh, to what I'm saying. What I've discovered uh, where families was concerned, I spoke about my children, and I spoke about their, their young years and their teenage years. But today I want to speak uh, to you about what I'm seeing happening uh, in our society, which is very disturbing and which is actually part of the reason why of our country looks the way it looks. Uh, one of the things that I've discovered uh, was that uh, children in our society is bearing or is bringing forth children. Now, a child can't raise a child. That's just not on. And you will discover my, my experience over these years in ministry. I've discovered that, that when a child gives birth to a child, that that child hasn't got the knowledge, hasn't matured, don't really know how to raise a child. Um, the saying goes that if you go into a shop like a, f a fruit store and they have avocado pears there on the shelf, there's, most shops will have a board up there that says you mustn't squeeze the, the avocado pears because they believe that when you squeeze it, you damage it. So that is what I've discovered where, where young people is concerned. Uh, you cannot become ripe too soon. You will have a problem because uh, my experience has taught me when somebody gets young to uh, get pregnant too soon, become a mother too soon, become a father too soon, when they are in the mid years, in the, say in the 20s, between 20 and 30, then they discover they haven't enjoyed the young life. Then they want to be young again. The, the scary part, what I've seen already was, when you get married so young, you will discover that you haven't enjoyed your young life. So now that you are married, now you want to be young. And that can become a major problem because now you want to disco, now you want to go out, now you want to do all the things that you forgot or that you not forgot what you left behind. You weren't doing that. Uh, like if you see where a child is concerned, they say when a child doesn't crawl in the baby stages, uh, just get up and started walking. That child soon after that child is walking will discover that child needs to crawl. You will see that child's crawling. I think Michael, my grandson, was one of that. Um, he didn't really crawl when he was a baby. So when he started walking, he wanted to crawl again because you miss that stage in your life. So that is exactly what's happening uh, where our young people is concerned. They miss the stage. So when you miss the stage, you usually go back to that stage. And sometimes... Going back to that stage is devastating because maybe you were married. Maybe you have a family now. Maybe you even have two children. Now you discover that you don't want to be married again uh, anymore. Now you discover that you don't want to have a, a child now anymore because now children is working on the nerves because you did not enjoy your young life. Um, children will always say, and I, sh I, I mentioned this when our grandchildren speak about it, they say they wish they are 21. And then you will hear, you wish they are that. Uh, then I said, no, 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 don't go there. Enjoy your young life. Um, stay young. Do whatever you need to do until you get there. Because once you get there, you want to be young again. And that's always the story. If I'm 21, I wish I was younger. When I'm like myself, um, 70, I wish I was 50 or I was 40. Because then I could do still a lot of things now. At 70, there's not a lot of things that I can do. So I discovered that if you skip the stage, um, you will want to go back to that stage so that you can do that. I saw a young girl uh, a couple of years ago. I think my, my, my daughter, Liesl, was still, yeah, no, she was still staying in Atlantis. So she had to go to the clinic in Section C. So I took her to the clinic um, with a baby. And then I was sitting in the clinic while the nurse or the sister was busy with her. And then I saw a young girl there with her baby. And her baby was crying because the baby was hungry. Um, not a baby that's now a baby baby, a baby that was walking already. So 
instead of her giving the baby milk, instead of her giving the baby something solid to eat, she gave the baby chips. And I was thinking, uh, when I was sitting there, this girl can't be uh, serious because uh, chips is not going to fill that baby's uh, um, uh, 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 tummy. You need to give the baby something solid. And, and at that stage, I was thinking, that baby needs milk. And if she has maybe parties that she, she can mix with the milk, that's what she needs to give the baby. But because she's a child, not really know, maybe a mom didn't help her or may, maybe a mom didn't even show her. She don't really know. And that is one of the things that's happening to our children. They get uh, fed with junk food, food that does not really help them or sustain them. And because they do that, um, we find a lot of children not doing well at school. One of the things that we discovered at Chris, uh, when uh, uh, one of the children we saw there was the, the mom was an alcoholic. And that child, because she was drinking during a pregnancy, it affected the child. And that child came to the crest and wanted uh, every day to take off his clothes because he was getting warm. He was getting hot because of what happened. Now, th the same thing with pregnant ladies or pregnant girls smoke um, or do drugs, whatever they do. It affects the child. And that child's being affected when the, the child goes to school. The, the teacher struggles with their child. The parent that don't really understand what's happening to the child want to beat the child to death but that parent is actually to blame for what the child is experiencing and going through so the list just goes on and on and on and especially in our generation or in our town Atlantis you will discover that ch children is having children girls is having ch uh, children the the boys is gone the, the the men is gone the guys that made them pregnant is not there they just uh, packed up and they left uh, in fact some of them goes to another girl and to another girl and to another girl and this girl is now sitting with this baby and she must raise this baby alone and then they turn to government for a grant uh, to to feed this baby many of the girls don't even the, the the babies don't even see that money because they spend that money on themselves and so this children goes through this whole generation of not having a father not having really having a mother and 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 the cycles just continue because when they grow up they just do the same thing their parents was doing and that's why we have what we are having we are having gangsters in our town and not just in our town in most of the uh, the towns uh, in south africa we have gangsters guys that uh, are raised without the father no dads in sight no parents to help and to guide so when they grow up and see what their dad was doing and what my mom was doing, they do exactly the same. And that's so scary, because when is the cycle going to stop? You will discover in our church, uh, I, was, I, was, I, I see Kevin does it d differently to what I was doing it, because I had a major problem with girls coming to the church to have their ba babies uh, uh, dedicated. Because what I've discovered over the years, they just come for that Sunday to church to dedicate the baby. You never see them again. You only see them when there's another problem or something else coming up. But where the church is concerned, they're done. They just want their child dedicated because they feel then the child will be safe. Then God is going to bless the child. They forget that the Bible actually inquires or uh, uh, that you as a parent must raise the child, that you as a parent must bring the child to church, that you as a parent must see that the child, in fact, you make that promise when you dedicate the child, that you will make sure that the child uh, will, be, will be nurtured and will grow up in the fear uh, of God. But that does not happen. So what we are having at the moment is children walking around just being dedicated in fact uh, i discovered that at prison that guys were baptized or they were dedicated they were uh, all of that was done to them but they've never been taken to church they did not grow up in church they just saw church for that day and that was it and then they left church or their parents left church never to come back they only come back when they come back with the next baby so that is what is happening i made sure my children would taken to church because I felt I was the priest of the house. I was not only the pastor, but I was the father of the house. It was my responsibility to take my children to church. I never sent them to church. I took them to church. The only place uh, uh, that they went when they were becoming bigger was youth. There they went alone. Kevin could go uh, to youth because uh, at that time he, was, he had a car. So he could go to youth, see that his brother and two sisters go with him to youth and bring them home uh, uh, after youth. But 
I, on a Sunday, it was my responsibility to take my family to church. That is not what's happening in our society today. Parents are not really taking their children to church. Um, dads are schooling off on a Sunday. Moms are uh, having the excuse they're making food. So nobody really is going to church. I had a thing in my house where we all went to church. And because my children were small, we divided them up. The two girls my wife would wash and dress. The two boys I would wash and dress. But then we would go to church. We would make sure that every Sunday we were in church as a family. It was my responsibility to do that. God appointed me as the priest of my house. And he's going to keep me accountable for my children because he gave that children to me so that I as a father can raise them in the fear of God. If every dad does that, can you imagine? We won't have those girls walking around having a baby. We won't have those things happening where our boys are becoming gangsters, getting involved where that is concerned. We won't have that because we will have a loving family raising their children in the fear of God, making sure they get all the love in the house. They don't need to go and look for love on the street because that's what's actually happening. Most of the children that's on the street, they are looking for love. And wow, they get the wrong advice. They get love from the wrong guys, wrong people, wrong advice. Eventually, they end up where they don't really want to be because they were told that they will help them. They will see to them. They will organize for them. The gangsters are the same. They will give you whatever you need. If you need techies, they will buy that for you. Whatever you need, they will sort it out. You can't get it by your family. You will get it by them. But it comes with a price. It comes uh, where you need to do something in return. And that is where we are are heading at this moment. I pray that our young people will wake up, will see where they are going with what they are doing, will seriously consider raising their children in the fear of God, making sure that their children uh, uh, are being raised in the right way, taking them to church, making sure that they give them the love they need because if they get all of that at home, they won't go and look for that at the, on the streets. And uh, I believe with all my heart, uh, that's what my wife and myself, we, we try to do that. We try to give them the love they needed. We try to surround them with all the, the, the comfort that they needed. We did everything in our power. We couldn't give them uh, what, uh, everything that they wanted because we didn't have a lot of money. But we gave them what they needed. And I believe with, with the little things they got uh, 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 as, a, as a bonus, we made sure they got Jesus because that, I believe, was the most important that a gift that we could give our children. We could give them Jesus. I said, man, if you have Jesus, you have everything. You can have all the things in the world. You can have the best um, clothes. You can have Nikes. You can have whatever it is, uh, the, the world gives. But if you don't have Jesus, you actually have nothing. So I pray that, that our young people will, will catch a wake up will turn to God, will run to Jesus, will recommit their lives, will make that promise they made in church to raise their children, that they will make that promise for themselves, that they will keep that promise, and that they will not only raise their children, but that they themselves will follow Jesus and live for Jesus. You can, Im can you imagine the change that will bring in the house if the children sees mom and dad is following Jesus? One of the mistakes that we make uh, as families, we come to Jesus when we're old, and then we expect our children to just make a roundabout turn, and, and that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. I believe, I, in fact, I remember a, a brother that was in our church. When he got saved, he was, he was old. I think he was either 50 or, or over. And when he got saved, he went home and he said, no more TV, he need the... And his son was so angry. I went to go speak to his son about that because that son was so angry at his dad. His dad said, no more TV in this house. So I, I had to really guide him and walk with him because he's been watching TV for all his life. His, his son has been watching TV. Now all of a sudden he got Jesus and he comes home and he says, no more TV. It doesn't work like that. So when you're young and you start a family, it's easier to win them for Jesus than when you are old and you've, you've done a lot of wrong, you've done a lot of things you're not supposed to do, and then come home and say to your children, you've accepted Jesus now, they must change. It's, it's very difficult. Ask me. I know I was in ministry. I saw that. But once 
You start your family from the beginning with Jesus. It's so easy to, to indoctrinate them, to, to teach them, to talk to them, to help them, because you will reap the benefits at the end of the day. I, I, I see that in my children. I see how we are reaping the benefits of the decisions we made. They followed suit. They made the very same decisions. They decided to follow Jesus, and they decided to give their all to Jesus. In fact, they are so involved. Um, I'm so proud of them being involved in church. I pray that our young people will really turn around Leave whatever you are doing that's distracting not only yourself but your community and turn to Jesus. Give him a chance in your life and you will see when Jesus walks into your life, your life will never be the same again. That's why the Bible says, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. I pray that God will help you to do that. Amen.